A huge thanks to MPB for sponsoring today's video. So this right here is the Fujifilm GFX 50S II. It's a medium format digital camera, which means the sensor inside here is bigger than the sensor inside my full frame cameras. And in low light photography, bigger sensors have an advantage in noise performance. So full frame cameras are significantly better than crop sensor cameras. So is the medium format camera that much more significantly better than a full frame camera? We're gonna find out. So I've currently got on here the Fuji 30mm f3.5 lens, which in full frame equivalence is 24mm f2.8. And I've also got the Fuji 23mm f4 lens, which is equivalent to an 18mm f3.2. And all of this kit has kindly been loaned to me by the sponsors of today's video, MPB. Now MPB is not normally a kit loaning company but it is the best place to buy sell and trade photography and videography gear so I'll put the prices up on screen for all of this kit and I'll put the current MPB price on there as well as the price for buying brand new and you can see that you can buy gear at much better prices and you also get a six month guarantee with anything you buy from MPB I'll talk a little bit more about them later I'm going to compare this camera to my Sony a7 IV, which is a full frame camera with 33 megapixels versus a medium format camera with 50 megapixels. And I'm going to be using the Sony 24mm f1.4 and the Sony 20mm f1.8 to compare the two lenses uh, because they'll have very similar fields of view. So I'm just going to get firing off some shots and uh, we'll do some comparisons. One thing that's immediately frustrated me a little bit in the shooting experience with the Fuji is that I come from Sony cameras and Sony cameras have a, um, a feature called bright monitoring which you can assign to a custom button and when you press that button the live view is a stream at insanely high ISO so like 200,000 or something and it streams one over four second exposures so you're essentially seeing a live-ish stream of relatively longish exposures and you can actually see your composition even in the dark like it can see way more than my naked eye can see and having that and then going to a camera that doesn't have that ah, <laughs> man i would miss that feature if i was to switch from sony there is a workaround you can shoot at crazy high iso the highest iso your camera has with a shutter speed of like one second. That way you can get a quick preview of your composition. It's useful to set that to a custom button on your camera so you can switch between the modes quite quickly. But you end up taking a bunch of trash photos that you have to delete later on. And it's not as quick as being able to see your composition before you even shoot it. But I'm having an issue with this composition because there's a infrared security camera on that little hut there and my Astro Modified a7 IV picks up the infrared light. So this is the image straight out of camera from my Astro Modified Sony. You can see quite clearly the infrared lights on those security cameras. But what was quite surprising is that also the Fujifilm camera picked up on them. Not quite as much, but if it's picking up on this infrared light, that suggests that it's probably pretty good at picking up hydrogen alpha light as well. So stock Fujifilm cameras might be pretty good at astrophotography, even without astro modification. I think I'm gonna head over that way. There's a little bit of the Milky Way, the Cygnus region of the Milky Way and some trees. I think that might be a bit of a better test composition.
one thing I am enjoying about the Fujifilm is that when you take a long exposure, there's a countdown on the screen showing you how long is left of the exposure, which I don't get on my Sony camera. It's such a simple feature that I wish was there. And also, you can take exposures longer than 30 seconds. Again, something I wish Sony would do. You can choose 40, 50, 60, 3 minutes, 4 minutes. Uh, to do that with my Sony camera, I have to use an intervalometer. I just wish I could change the shutter speed to something longer than 30 seconds in camera. Wake up, Sony, please. So Sony recently addressed this with the release of the Sony a7R5, which does allow for longer shutter speeds than 30 seconds, and I really hope they bring this feature to other cameras in a firmware update. However, there have been firmware updates to other cameras like the a7 IV, and they didn't introduce that feature, which is a shame. So please don't make me beg, Sony. Anyway, here is the Sony Image straight out of camera, ISO 6400, and I used f2.8, as that is the full frame equivalent of f3.5, which is what I used with the Fujifilm camera here, and immediately you'll notice two things. First is the aspect ratio. So this medium format camera is 4x3, whereas my full frame Sony cameras are 3x2. The second thing you'll notice is that the Fujifilm image is a lot darker. And what really surprised me is that when I tried to brighten the image or lift the shadows, it just fell apart. The shadows are so full of noise and color noise and there was just no room to brighten the image. And I know a lot of Fujifilm users swear by Capture One over Lightroom, but it would take a lot to convince me to switch editing suites at this point. And and after this first test, I'm not really convinced. The lake is completely frozen over. It's the first time I've ever seen this lake frozen. Wow. Now don't worry, there's a jetty underneath where I'm walking here, so there was no risk of me falling through the ice into the lake. And I took some more test shots, but my findings didn't really change. The Fujifilm images were much darker, and there was no room to pull detail out of the dark areas. And I also noticed that the Fujifilm had a strong amp glow. You can see a purple fringe along the bottom edge of the frame, which is not good. Now, going into this test, I was kind of expecting the Fujifilm to have at least slightly better noise performance than the full frame Sony. I didn't expect it to be the clear loser. There's two things going on here that can help explain why this is happening. First is in the sensor, and the second is in the lenses. Even though larger sensors do have an advantage in low light, the more important influencing factor is the pixel pitch, which is basically the distance between the center of two adjacent pixels. The bigger the pixel pitch, the bigger the pixels can be, and bigger pixels perform much better in low light than smaller, more tightly packed pixels. The 50 megapixel Fujifilm GFX 50S2 has a pixel pitch of 5.31 microns. The Sony a7 IV that I was using has a pixel pitch of 5.12 microns, so there's very little difference. In comparison, the 12 megapixel Sony a7S III has a pixel pitch of 8.36 microns, and the 60 megapixel a7R5 has a pixel pitch of 3.76 microns. So you can see that there's very little difference between the Sony a7 IV and the Fujifilm GFX 50S II that I was testing, so you can kind of expect a similar low light performance when you look at the pixel pitch, the size of the pixels on the sensor. So if we look at issue number two, the lenses. I was using the fastest wide angle lenses available for the Fujifilm medium format cameras and they only opened up to f3.5 and f4 and already they were incredibly big and heavy. The lenses designed for a bigger sensor need to be bigger in order to fill that sensor with more light. On the other hand, the lenses designed for full frame cameras are smaller and Sony has done an amazing job of producing fast wide angle lenses for full frame cameras to the point where they have much wider apertures as well of f1.4 and f1.8 and that's one comparison i haven't shown you guys yet we can look at the the tree image again captured with the widest aperture of the fujifilm lens and then if i use f1.4 on the sony lens it's insanely brighter and a brighter image means that more light is being collected and the more light that's being collected the less noise there will be in your images. So for astrophotography, you're very limited in your lens choice when it comes to medium format cameras. And even if there were lenses with wider apertures, I dread to think how big and how heavy they would be because the lenses I tested were already beasts. And so I can quite happily conclude, certainly for myself, that upgrading to those expensive 
Medium format cameras with their big, expensive lenses is not worth it for astrophotography. Now, maybe if there was a medium format camera with 20, 24 megapixels and there were smaller, lighter lenses that had wider apertures, then it would be a different story. But unfortunately, that's not the reality of today's market. I hope you found this video useful. Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any more astrophotography content. And don't forget to check out the sponsors of today's video, MPB. There'll be a link in the video description down below. And if you have any gear lying around that you haven't used for a while, consider heading over to mpb.com, get an instant quote online for your gear. And if you're happy with that quote, MPB will collect the gear from your address at a date of your choice completely free. They take so much faff out of selling your unused gear. Year. And that's why, in my opinion, it's the best place to buy, sell, and trade photography and videography gear. Anyway, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. And if it's cloudy, maybe check out one of my other videos instead. There's plenty here that you can learn completely free about landscape astrophotography.